Hey guys, um, just wanted to make a video today about some questions that I've had on the comments or in the comments I should say and um, my gosh it's been raining here like crazy. We just got another 80 mils in the last few days which is just in Calgary that's a third of our rain and we've been getting this every week so <laughs> um, unbelievable. So I wanted to talk quickly about um, Looks like I'm overexposed a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. Um, the Probably one of the most important tools you can get on a farm, especially if you're in a new region, is one of these guys. And so this is just a simple rain gauge, not very expensive. Uh, we come out and we empty it on a semi-regular basis. And uh, we haven't quite got a system for recording it yet, but we will get that going here very quickly. Let's come out empty it out, stick it back in the ground, and now you can kind of keep track of how much moisture is coming. It's one of those pattern observations that gives you a sense of how your ecosystem is going to behave. Um, water and permaculture is kind of the fuel, and the sun is the gas pedal, and so we live in a province where the gas is always going you know, to pedal to the metal, and depending on where you live will depend upon how much fuel you have to feed to the engine. So um, that gives us kind of a bit of a clue. And you can certainly see it in the, in the grass that we have to cut here. And I'm not really a big fan of cutting lawn. Um, so we're actively trying to get rid of as much of it as possible. You can kind of see what's going on in the background there. Um, we will eliminate most of it, but it's still useful for kids to play. So we'll keep a little bit. Anyways, I wanted to make a video about the Greenhouse Foundation. And so the question was, um, why have we built the walls this way, the, the footing? And um, why was it so important to um, uh, put piles into the ground so that the wall wouldn't cave in? Now, if you look in here, and I'll just change angle here for a bit. We've got walls but we don't, have, um, we don't have a floor. And so typically what would happen is it'd be a concrete floor that would kind of connect the bottom of these walls here, which would provide pressure towards the outside. Now on the other side of this wall right here is um, the outside ground. And so when we backfill this down here, it's gonna put pressure against this wall right here. Now in a normal basement, there'd be a concrete floor that would connect this side to this side and that would create um, an opposite pressure which would stop the walls from um, collapsing in basically. Now there is going to be some soil in here but it's not going to provide the same level of back pressure as a concrete slab would and so what we did instead is we actually put piles um, which connect into this wall eight feet on center all the way along and those piles are connected into the concrete wall with rebar and so the wall itself has incredible staying power um, and will not kind of rotate in as a result of back pressure from the soil. Now what's going to happen in this footing is we're going to put a subterranean heating and cooling system in and I'm going to take you guys through that as we uh, build it um, with regards to the decisions that we make and how we do it and um, after the, the pipes go in for the subterranean heating and cooling system, we're going to put some of the subsoil in from over there. And then um, we're going to put some topsoil on top of that. And then we're going to frame the whole greenhouse in. And, um, and so we're going to do it that order because trying to bring in this volume of soil um, with the greenhouse on top would be very challenging versus we can just get a, a backhoe and scoop it in. So those are kind of the next steps. Um, once we get our air system in, then we can start the backfilling process. So hopefully that answered your question about um, greenhouse footings and why we built this one the way that we did. Um, I guess just a couple of other little points. It is gonna be three to four feet below grade. Um, so we're gonna keep that thermal energy in the actual soil itself. I'm probably gonna do a horizontal insulation footing around the whole greenhouse as well um, just to increase that amount of thermal resistance and heat storage 
and um, and the walls are all going to be two by six, so that will get us close to not quite R20, but pretty close to it. Um, we're going to sheet it all with tin, which should last for a really long period of time. So we'll go white on the inside, and we're going to go with a beautiful blue heron on the outside. Uh, polycarbonate glazing, obviously, on the front. We're going to go with a 16 mil three wall, uh, which has an R value of 1.8, I believe. Um, we're going to have really big vents on the bottom, vents on the top. And then one thing we're adding into this greenhouse, which I'm really stoked about, is we're going to actually uh, put up roll-up doors into it. So um, they'll be motorized, which will mean that I can put those doors onto either a switch or onto a thermostat. And so if the greenhouse gets too hot, the overhead doors will just roll up uh, and dramatically increase the amount of ventilation in the space. Not only that, but if I get the right roll-up door, I'll be able to bring a skid steer in there and do some work uh, in the greenhouse using a machine, which um, will save a lot of time. So stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, if you have any other questions about greenhouses or the progress, please leave them in the show notes below. Um, and until then, talk to you soon. Thank you.